Hi, I'm Jonathan J. Ryan. I'm from Wargaming Recon, and we're here at the Amherst Makers Fair Game Day, and I'm with York Bender of Things from the Basement. York, how are you today? I'm good, thank you, Jonathan. So, why don't you talk to me a little bit about what we have right behind here? These are Stasi's Heroes, is that right? These are Stasi's Heroes, yeah. Um, the guy who's, who's um, producing these kits or, or figures is Thomas Stöser. He's a German um, guy. I don't know him personally, I only talk to him via email and messenger and, and the usual modern stuff. So he has nice World War II character figures in 28mm. They are either based on historic characters or mm -hmm. on movie or TV show um, yeah, characters like Flick and Schulz, for example, from Hobbit's Heroes. Do and you have any favorites among the...? Yeah, especially Flick and Schulz, because this is probably the most popular set that he's ever produced, I guess. I don't know how they sell in Europe, but here they are really, they sell like... I, can I mean, I know nothing, but I can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is actually catching my eye right here. Benjamin Vandervoort, yeah. U.S. Airborne Lieutenant Colonel, looks gorgeous. That's um, John Wayne in The Longest Day. Oh, right, right, right. That's why it threw my eye. He broke his or uh, hurt his ankle by uh, parachuting into Normandy. <laughs> so that's why they um, got this card for him. And, and then he was dragged around by his comrades and, and troops. So That's amazing. Kept on fighting. So you sell a variety of things, not just figures like this. You sell Gamers Grass, right? Right. So you have a bunch of that. Yes. But you are most known for MDF kits. Right. Are I'm there any special ones that you have coming up that you can share with us? I have a few I can show that are, let's say, my most recent designs. Sure. Like, for example, the Trojan Horse, which was some kind of crazy idea I had. Um, I've never seen a model kit of it, so I, I gave it a try. Yeah. And I think it really worked out nice. Here it is. I painted it a bit, so usually it comes in blank MDF, of course, and as a this kit. This is gorgeous. But this is my painted version of the Trojan Horse. Nobody knows what it looked like, right? So no, it's I whatever you want. It's a designer's dream. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Now, do you like the wheels move, or is it more of a stationary kind the, of thing? The wheels can move, um, but it's not really necessary. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't open up, it's just it's a, a drop piece. You can put... I thought about skirmish games, Bottle gogs, for example, or maybe it even works for, for 15 or 20 mil figures. Yeah. Because who knows how big that thing really was. That's if true. It's real. So, yeah, that's the Trojan horse. I see this and I think, oh, my kid would love this. Probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful, really. I love it. Thank you. It's a great design. And unlike anything else that you offer. That's true. It's the only my only venture into antique or yeah ancient wargaming so far, and I'm not sure I will do it again because I'm not sure if I want to do temples or stuff like that. Never but say this, never. Never this. Say if never, this right? does well, so buy this, <laughs> buy the Trojan horse, and then York will have to make more. Yes, for right? by the Trojan walls, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I you're know. familiar with walls, so you could. Uh, but you don't just do ancients; you do other periods. Right? I do other periods. Yes, I just started something. <laughs> Really new, which is my historic American building series. Oh my goodness, look at this. So, um, this is one of the houses that stays at, I think it's called Battle Road in Lexington Concord. Yep. It's uh, Captain William Smith's house. He was one of the commanders of the Minutemen, and that was the place he was living in. Um, I don't know much about, or I don't remember that much about the history of the house. I know it's, it's still standing um, mm -hmm. in Lexington. Slash Concord. You can open it up to go and play and place your troop in right. You can take out the the roof and maybe we get a glimpse inside. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Even the so, this part of the roof comes up. So oh, so you really get full flesh. You have nice stairs in here. You get the doors that I'm presuming you glued in place, which is what right. I would have done. And nice detailing on the uh, floor as well. And then for the second floor here. Put it in again, so you have, of course you have the stairs and you come into an... Oh, that's wonderful, look at that. A little playable it is. Yeah. This is a great kit, and the windows, I know they're very iconic. Right. Oh, this is just absolutely beautiful, and then you have here as well like a nice little back door, so many points of entry, depending on what kind of game you're playing. Right. But also, I think it just would be kind of pretty to have on a table somewhere. I think it's, yeah, it's, um, I like it a lot, because um, I like the, the New England building styles in general so i had 
planned to, to do something like that a long time and now I just started and I guess there will be more coming over the time. I hope so. I have a house that I'm hoping you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I know you sent me a picture of I that I keep one. on uh, mentioning this, but you don't just do houses. You do a variety of things. May I assist with this? You can. It's just, it's a, the, you could glue it in, but I thought it would be nice to be able to take it apart for transportation okay. and storage. Oh, absolutely. So and that's, we'll... again, okay. that's the Concord Bridge. Oh, yes. So that's where the first shots were fired that yeah. were then heard around the world. Oh, beautiful. So, okay. Great um, work on the railings and support. Now, was this great. difficult to do? The okay. difficult part for the bridge was it has a slight curve. Oh, yeah, look at that. Um, so it, yeah, it took some took some some train work, but I, I figured it out, I guess. So I think it worked pretty well and, and looks good. Okay. I'm always amazed by your designs because some of them seem deceptively simple, but I'm sure so much goes into it that the yeah. customer never knows. Probably yes. I I told a story today to a customer. I have this uh, Tega factory building, um, which I completely finished in two days. And when, no. I, when I when I when I did the test build. There was nothing wrong with it. It was just okay and, and perfect. That in two whole that, days? That rarely happens. Th so this and, thing and for example, the, the William Smith house that yep. I just showed you, I had a hard time getting the roof right. So oh. that took me maybe a week. <laughs> oh my goodness. But then the factory... The factory is this guy. Yeah, it's a bigger, it's a bigger thing. Oh my god, look at this. Um, it has gigantic. a nice loading dock on the one side. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice stairs going up. Right. And on the back side, there's another entrance because I know people would like to have more entry points than just one. Of course, there's a ladder that you can place wherever you want to oh, very go, nice. be able to go up onto the roof. Or so that just kind of sits on top. Yes, there? you can just slide it in wherever you want, and then I hope you open it up. There's some kind of interior inside as well. I think it should be fine. So let's say the inside extension of the loading dock with a little stair that goes to the ground level. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really nice. And I, and I love the roof. Yeah. I mean, it seems simple, but your chimney work, your chimneys are gorgeous. Like you do really good chimneys. <laughs> Thank you. You do. <laughs> the chimneys and scatter train for you, I think, are highlights and it probably seems unusual. But yeah, and they are very handy because they help you getting this piece out in and out. It's your little <laughs> handle and then it just goes on like so, right? You can just push it in because there's this little... Yeah, great. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Okay. So yeah, that's the factory building. And of course, the factory should be a bit bigger than just one building. So there will be more coming in the future, I'm pretty sure. I have some ideas. Like what? What kind of ideas? Um, I'm not sure if I should go even bigger. I said, why not? Go smaller. Maybe I will do both. Um, I mean, it needs some kind of work halls, maybe some storage area, an administrative building maybe. So. I come up with something, I'm pretty sure. Well, I mean, you've done whole sets of things. So you have like a Mediterranean village that you've done at the Russian village was the first one you did yeah. artists for both, which were very successful. Yeah. And then you kind of have this whole thing going on with another set of Yamashiro Mountain Fort, right. which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, so I can see like a whole industrial village kind of, I don't, that's not the right word, but like complex that's as being like a whole like right. nice set so you got to catch them all and have them in, pick them up and assemble them all. Yeah, that's that's my idea to do, yeah, make make it uh, modular so you can buy two pieces, one piece, whatever you need and or add up or make it big, make it small, whatever your table space allows or your wallet allows, you know, it's the way it is. That's true, so with the factory, like if you're manufacturing, for example, you might need to exhaust all that out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, do you have anything that helps with that, or is it just like these rooftop chimneys is oh, the way is, to, for it to go? also a bigger chimney. Oh, a bigger one, okay. Yes, even a bigger chimney, because that's also oh, what stands goodness. out when you look at an uh, industrial area. You have the it's chimney, beautiful. so on this, I, I tried to do it a bit more interesting than just a square or rectangular um, form, so I did this kind of fancy It almost lower kind of part. steps right. back a little bit. Steps kind of nice. <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that makes sense too. Like structurally, I think it would give extra support to right. it as well. Uh, so it's aesthetically pleasing, but then it has a, a practical yeah. That's a nice height, so it will stand out on the table. Oh, that's beautiful. And just all your stuff is wonderful. Then I know you have other things that go inside. You've made, what, workbenches? Right. and. Uh, I think your manufacturing equipment is really right. I, I surprised me the machinery. most. Machinery, yeah, I made um, 
tables or scrolls, so I know not all the all the words. Um, 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 sender and, and what else do I have? A The assembly for those is different though, because right instead of just kind of like gluing the walls and stuff together, it's a vertical build. Is that right? A lot of them just layer up, let's say, two or three, okay. or four or five layers of, of MDF pieces, and then you get the the shape of the machine, and then add some smaller pieces to get the impression of turning wheels or. Um, I don't know, whatever the, the machine has as, as movable parts. So yeah, it's a bit different, but it works pretty well. That's fantastic. Maybe so you can take a few pictures to show on, on your Facebook page. Oh, in I the think end. we have one right here okay, that's flying into us from your lovely assistant. So right here, how would one, like when you get this, obviously it doesn't look like this in the set, right? Of course not. Um, but how would one construct this? In fact, it's, um, I think it's five layers of MDF pieces in different shapes. So like really be kind of like on the side like this almost. Yes. And then you add the, the, the table area in, in a 90 degree angle more or less. Okay. And, and the small add-on pieces like the, the wheels and the machine part in front of it. Okay, so, so it gives you like all the dials and everything. Right, right. And I love that it's a thing from the basement, branded. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's branded. <laughs> no, is that on all of them? Or did yes. you do this just for the... No, it's, for, it's on all of them. On oh. all the machines. So it's a machine, uh, yeah. I and love that. That's just an idea I had this by, by designing them. gorgeous. I really think you excel with your scattered terrain type stuff. Right? Thanks. It's a highlight. So if people want to stay up to date with all the things that you're doing, and if more importantly, they want to buy any of this beautiful stuff, how can they do that? Oh, they can find me online, of course, at uh, www.thingsfromthebasement.com. There's also a Facebook page where you can uh, get the, the latest updates because that's a nice a nice forum to to yeah to show where you are and what you're working on or what your plans are um, yeah that's where you find me well and as always you can find us on all the things as wargaming recon and we are also at wargamingrecon.com plus on our podcast if you listen to the audio podcast we have a whole MDF terrain kind of segment called the Lumber Mills, generously sponsored by Things from the Basement, where we talk about MDF kits of all types, give tips and tricks, learn from my mistakes, unless you'd like your stuff battle damage, in which case, do as I do and not as I say. Thank you so much, York. This has been a pleasure. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. That was nice.